Hello there everybody and welcome back to another episode of Anecologist Plays Ark Survival Evolved where we are trying to survive on this, well, in this hostile world and at the same time try to learn a little bit more about the creatures that we encounter. Now last time we did start our beach house over here, we also tamed two dodos, Ruffus and Cucolatus. Today we are going to try and do a few other things. First of all, I want to craft the bola. We need fiber for that. Now that is an amazing weapon. Never ever underestimate the value of bolas. Because they will most likely at some point in this game save your life. Now we are going to need a better weapon to knock out some of the dinosaurs. So we are, have made a wooden club. We have the bolas ready. I always try to have about five or so on me. And let's see if we can now actually go and tame a Dilophosaurus so that we can have our first proper little bit more dangerous carnivore with us as well when we go exploring. Aha! Found one down there. Now Dilophosaurus is actually much larger than they are shown in the game here. And they, these ones here are very much based on the fictional Dilophosauruses of Jurassic Park which had the frill and could spit venom. There's no evidence in life that they actually, or in the fossil record, that they actually could. Oh, I really should throw this properly. But there we go. Okay, so let's knock him out with a wooden club. The most basic of ways of, well, apart from using your fists, of getting something knocked out. Well, there we go. He's knocked out. Let's now get some narco berries and meat in him. Now, just a reminder, if you are playing this, do not eat the purple berries. A friend of mine has eaten the purple berries and then promptly passed out because they are narco berries after all. <laughs> now, we're just going to wait for the Lothosaurus over here to actually finish taming, which is there. <laughs> Let's call him Philip. Don't ask me why, but this is Philip. Now, the Lothosaurus had these very pronounced crests on the front of, on, on the top of their heads, and it's most likely that it was used as some kind of display, although I believe mo both sexes had this. Uh, the fossils initially found had a little bit of a crest there, but it was not known the true extent thereof. Nowadays, it seems that there has been a lot of fossils, brilliant fossils that came out, which actually show that these crests were a little bit larger actually than they are shown here. And Dilophosaurus means two crested lizard which this is. Saurus is lizard, so whenever you see anything with Saurus in the name, it means lizard. Di means two. Uh, I think Lofo is crested in this case, so two crested lizard. Now, as I said, they don't have the frill here. The frill comes from the frilled lizard from Australia. That's the inspiration behind the uh, Dilophosaurus in Jurassic Park, and then, of course, here in Ark as well. Now, these Dilophosauruses would be about seven meters long, uh, they would have been a little bit more than two meters tall, which is about one and a half times the height of the Dilophosaurus here. Actually, about twice the height here. Uh, would be also be from the head up to about here. They would have been the apex predator of their ecosystem. They would not be reduced to being the weak ones scavenging on the beach here. These guys would have been hunting the animals that they encountered in their Jurassic world. And in Jurassic Park... The Dilophosaurus is actually one of the few creatures that actually did come from the Jurassic era. The majority of the creatures in Jurassic Park actually came from the Cretaceous period. Now in Ark, of course, we are going to encounter creatures from all, all time periods, not just the Jurassic or Cretaceous. We've got Carbonimus over there, or Carbonimus, which is a massive turtle or tortoise, which came from South America. And this is from the time after the dinosaurs, from the... I think it's the Eocene, if I'm not mistaken, but it came. It occurred about 60 to 57 million years ago, uh, at the same time as a massive snake from that area as well, the uh, Titanoboa. Now our two dodos over here have actually laid an egg, so let us drop it down by the fire and hope it's not too hot or too cold. It is incubating, so in five and a half minutes I should be able to have a little baby dodo. Now, what all good survivors need would be narcotics. And in order to get narcotics, we do need to make the mortar and pestle. And for that, I need a bit of stone. So let us get all of that sorted. Let's make a mortar and pestle. And just drop that down 
in the corner over here. And in there, we are going to just put all our spoiled meat and all the narco berries we have. But we do still need the narcotic engram over there. And then we can make some narcotics. Now, while we are running around on the beach, we have got this weird little guy, the trilobite. Trilobite meaning three-lobed creature. And they are completely extinct. There's nothing like them on Earth. They may superficially look like horseshoe crabs. However, they are unrelated. These little guys are typical arthropods, meaning jointed legs. And in this game, they are pretty much pointless. And we are just going to go and stab him with a spear. And our little Philip over here is hopefully going to get... There we go, the killing blow. Philip, please give me back everything you just harvested. Great source of chitin, silica pearls and oil. I was particularly after the chitin. That's great stuff. Now the chitin there is what you'll typically find in uh, uh, creatures like insects, which will have chitin in their body to, to give them that exoskeleton, or it's in their exoskeleton, gives it a nice bit of strength. But chitin is also found in fungi. Fungi also will have chitin in their cell walls. Oh dear, I'm a terrible father. I forgot to actually come and look at the little baby that you guys hatched. Um, and the little one is dead. So, waste not, want not, you know. For some reason, I can't harvest the little body. So this is just a little sad little dodo lying on the beach. Sorry, little ones. You guys will just have to make a new one for me. Now, another something that all survivors need would be a trusty steed. And that is why, here at the edge of the island, I spotted the perfect mount for us. Now, I have made some trank arrows as well. This should knock out the... Well, I can also tame the moss chops over there. But the parasaurolophus, the parasaur as it's called in the game, should be knocked out quite easily with some trank arrows. So let's just snare you. And you can see the bola over there used to uh, hit around the legs and actually catch the unfortunate little creature. Okay, and now we can just put in some mijo berries. That should tame it quite quickly. Now the bola over here did snare the creature and this was a South, mostly South American weapon that was used to trap Rias, uh, flightless birds, very similar to ostriches. Have I got Tinto berries? Yes, I do. Let's tame you. And let's call you Machop. As I was saying, the bola over here, mostly a South American weapon, but it was also used by the Inuit in North America as well. It is it was mostly used to catch things like Rias and also llama-like creatures, uh, some, some camelids in South America as well. And the idea is that when you are, when you have snuck up to a creature, you swirl it around to actually gain momentum and then throw it at the legs of the creature and then, you know, they fall down and then you can go and stab them to death if you wanted to or do whatever you wanted to. Now, most bolas had three of these heavy weights, usually stones, uh, in some cases little bags, with, uh, with stones in them as well, attached to a few strings, which were then tied together and you held on the tied together section and then twirled that around. So we have our Parasaur, our Parasaurolophus over here, and we're going to call him Elvis. We're based on the Lost World. Uh, if you remember that, there's a section where, uh, there's a part where Roland the Hunter just doesn't remember, doesn't know all these dinosaur names and just calls him Elvis, the Pompadour. We can almost make it saddle. Let's just harvest some fiber here. We should now be able to do it. And let's just open this. Let's see what we've got. We've got a few useful things. And now that we've got everything, we can craft a saddle for Elvis and actually equip that. And now we have a trusty mount. The Parasaur is amazing because it has got this ability which allows you to detect enemies, in this case the Ichthyornis over there and Dilophosaurus I think along the beach. Now the Parasaur... Ah! You little evil thing. See that's why I don't like the Ichthyornis. And now it's a dead Ichthyornis. 
Eh, waste not, want not. Okay. Now the Parasaurolophus characterized by this big crest on its head. And there have been a few theories as to why that is. Some people thought it was some kind of uh, display mechanism for them to display to one another. But it turns out it is most likely to actually communicate with one another. Uh, it really resonates quite a bit. This one is most likely Parasaurolophus walkeri, the type specimen, the first species in the genus to be described. There were three species, but all three of them had these crests, although in the one species it was reduced quite a bit. Walkeri, I think, had the largest crest of the three. Yeah, just go and poo on the beach here, that's perfectly fine. But surprisingly, I always thought Parasaurolophus was a bit of a, uh, a more common species. Turns out it was actually quite rare in its environment in the area that it occurred in North America. Now it is quite possible that Parasaurolophus was also a social animal, similar to all the other duck-billed dinosaurs. I believe all of them actually were quite social. The other hadrosaurs, the duck-billed dinosaurs, so called because of their very characteristic duck-like uh, bills or, or mouths that they had. And as a result, then it would have been useful to be able to communicate over relatively long distances. Hence, the little uh, crest at the top there. But the Parasaurolophus over here is an amazing berry harvester. And he is going to be the creature that I'm going to be riding around with quite a lot. Elvis over here will be able to carry a lot of stuff. Now, in the game I have with my wife, we have, well, I had a one called Sushi. Sushi was our, uh, was my, my awesome para Parasaurolophus. Unfortunately, Sushi died recently and we still have to go and survive because we are, on, in our world, we are under attack at the moment. And unfortunately, I lost Sushi. Sushi, it's very, very sad that I have lost Sushi. But at least now we have our new friend over here, Elvis is going to hopefully survive. Now what I have also made is a little bit of a place to keep our dodos safe and so they don't constantly sit in the house and poop in the house. So let's just go and collect you guys. Come on. Taking you to a new home. You guys are going to stay outside now. I have just gone and tamed another dodo female. This one is called Didi because of, you know, Didi the dodo. And immediately Didi and... Who was the male here? It's not Raphas, it's Cuculatus. Yeah, Cuculatus. Uh, Cuculatus and Didi, they've gotten it on and we are going to get an egg. In order to make everything a little bit easier as well for me. Made a feeding trough. And in that we're just going to dump a whole bunch of berries. So we do not have to worry about feeding our little ones over here. Okay. Nice. Repopulate the earth with dodos, please. But that about wraps it up for today's episode. Next time, we are going to be looking a little bit more at the moss chops, which we, ha which we have wandering around over here. And we will also go and explore a little bit more inland to see what we find. Because we've been confined pretty much to this part of the beach. I think it is time for us to head out. We've got our base starting to get up and running here. We've got a pen for our dodos. They're carrying on with life. There should be an egg here as well. Let's have a look. There is a fertilized egg. And it is too cold. So let's go and hatch it by the fire. And hopefully this time around, I remember to feed the baby when it is born. Still too cold. Okay. So I will keep it in my inventory. And then when it is not raining outside and it is daytime, then I will try to hatch it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It was a little bit of a short one again. We will delve a little bit more into the ecology of these creatures again next time. Until then, stay safe. I will see you all soon.